My mom is Ella Blumenthal. She's a survivor of the Warsaw Ghetto, of Majdanek, Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen, where she was liberated by the British Army in 1945. She then made her way to Paris, where she lived for two years, and soon after that managed to get into the then Palestine under an assumed name, which she has to this day. It was in 1948 when my father was uh, on a visit from uh, South Africa where she met him. They uh, married in Tel Aviv after a 13-day romance and came to live in Johannesburg. Growing up, I was aware that my mother was different, but I just couldn't understand why. I used to ask her what the scar was on her arm. It was where she had had the number removed, and she told me that she was in a car accident. I also asked why I had no grandparents, nor uncles and aunts and cousins. She then showed me the photograph which took pride of place on her mantelpiece. It was the last photograph taken of them, of the entire family, all 23 of them, in the Warsaw Ghetto. She showed me who my grandfather was, uh, standing tall and proud with his grey beard, who my grandmother was, after whom I am named, and the rest of the family who had uh, perished um, in Treblinka. My mom, I recall, used to have terrible nightmares when I was growing up. I remember her screaming out at night, they're taking my children, they're taking my children. I would run to her and say, but I'm here. And it's ever since then that I felt a anxiety and a fear that something would happen to her, that I feel uh, very overprotective, that I should protect her from any further harm um, that should come her way for the rest of her life. My parents owned uh, a business in Brackpan. Um, my mother ruled with an iron fist. She was both feared and respected. Uh, I recall on uh, when I first met my husband, we uh, on one of the uh, first visits to meet the family, one of his uncles said to me, um, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Brackpan. And he said, I know a woman there. He said, perhaps you know her. Uh, she's a real battle axe. Uh, I used to uh, sell pantyhose to her. And before he went any further, uh, I said, is it perhaps, is, was her name Ella Blumenthal? And he said, yes, that's the one. And then he said, actually, when I said, look, that's my mom, he said, oh, she wasn't so bad. But then he um, admitted to me afterwards that he actually used to need to take a whiskey uh, just before he um, needed to see her uh, because um, she was uh, that feared and she really was a battle axe. There were, I could think of two lessons that uh, I've learned from my, my mom. The first one being that, um, uh, that you, you never give up. She... I recall her telling me uh, when she was in Auschwitz, she's had survived with her niece, who was just three years uh, younger than her, but a lot more frail. And um, her, her niece kept on saying, look, let's just end the suffering. Let's go to the wires and just throw ourselves onto the electric fence and just end this terrible life that we're living. And my mom would say, you know what? Tomorrow's another day. Things... It may just be better. Just let's wait another day. Let's just wait another day. And that's a concept that has guided me throughout my entire life. Uh, the other lesson that she has taught me is one of positivity. I recall when she had uh, broken a hip. She was 92. She was lying in ICU and she was really ill. And I recall that it took three or four nurses to turn her in her bed. And she turned towards me and said, I was standing there and she said, do you think I'll be able to swim again? And I was just thinking I would be happy if she just walked again. That was all I could ask for. But true enough, six weeks later, she was back in the pool um, at the Virgin Active uh, where she swims in Greenpoint. And very soon she was doing her lengths. I, uh, I also uh, recall on, on one of her other visits to ICU when she was ill and this just shows that she always has a twinkle in her eye. And she said to me, just disconnect me from all these machines and drips. There is a, a virgin active in the building at Christian Barnard. And quickly, let's go. No one will notice that we've gone. Let me just go and swipe my card in at the gym. She was nervous of losing her membership. 
And then we'll come back and you'll quickly reconnect me and no one will even know that I'm gone. Another one of her personality traits is uh, one of forthrightness. And she, uh, I recall also when my husband, on his very first visit to meet the family, she, she, he had never met her before, she answered the door and she said the, her first words to him were, those jeans, they look absolutely dreadful. Just give them away. Don't wear them again. And that's the way she is. Um, I could never understand that um, with all the trauma that she suffered, how she could turn into such a warm, caring and loving mother, grandmother and great-grandmother. She is um, uh, currently uh, 98 years old. She lives in Seapoint. She's very adept at using uh, uh, Facebook. In fact, if anyone asks to be her friend, she um, always makes them wait a week or two because she told me she doesn't want to appear too easy. She's also adept at using FaceTime. She FaceTimes her family throughout the world um, and is uh, up to date with everybody's lives on a daily basis. Um, she, even during this uh, lockdown, she's come to, to, to grips with using Zoom. And uh, recently, when someone said to her, let's Skype, she said, oh, no, Skype is very old-fashioned. I only use FaceTime. She also uh, reads the BBC as well as Reuters and um, keeps up to date uh, 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 on, on, a, on a daily basis. Uh, she has never let her uh, past define her future. She, she lives her life by Hashem's rules as well as a few of her own. She is the pivot around which this family turns um, and is um, admired and respected, not only by our family, but by everybody uh, with whom she comes into contact. 